So continuing on, we're going to go ahead now and add some color into these. And I'll start here with part three. This is color fall off. And we'll just look at this one here that's roughness 95. And you can see I've created this sort of teal color. Now, I formulated this to be very specific. I used a hue angle of 180, which is exactly halfway in the 360. And I set the saturation and the value for 128. Now, the saturation got changed slightly. Maxwell is having some color accuracy issues right now. They're going to fix that in the next update, so that shouldn't be a problem by the time you're seeing this. But for me, it just shifted slightly, but that was originally 128. And the reason why is because 128 is exactly halfway in the 256 scale of saturation and value. This number here is, is 360, 360 degrees around that circle. And then these are 256 and 256, respectively. So this is exactly halfway on every point of this scale. And this will become important later. So this is effectively a mid-value, a pure mid-value color. And when you read the manual, it says most objects have a white reflectance 90. So you may think, hey, well, that's the right thing to do. Put white and reflectance 90 and forget about it. Well, not really. And the reason why is because white reflectance 90 is definitely the way to go for shiny objects that are glossy, like plastic and stuff like that. But the way that they achieve that white reflectance 90 is because the coating doesn't have any color. So therefore, it is a white reflectance 90. If you're creating an object that has color, a white reflectance 90 is going to create problems. So let's go ahead and take a look at that render here that will show this. Go over here to R&R &R, part three. And, you know, at 95, we don't really see any kind of problems. You know, the white doesn't seem to be causing any issues. And even at 90, it's okay. Right. But as soon as we get down to, say, 80 or below, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these. We can really see that white creeping in and it's creating a very unnatural look. We're, we're ending up with these strongly saturated stripes of that cyan zero color. But then it's next to these very desaturated grayish. Almost dusty looking areas of. Where the white of the reflectance 90 and the tealish blue is mixing and it's creating a very nasty look. And this becomes even more exaggerated as we go lower in roughness because that reflectance 90 color is becoming more and more important to the point now where we're only seeing these weird little stripes in our metallic area that indicate what the original reflectance zero color was. We're not seeing that reflectance color go throughout. We're only seeing it where zero is still zero and everything else is basically white or in this case, what we would think of as being silver. This is not a metallic object, which is what you would expect. This is not what we want. So how do we get around that? Well, we go over here and let's go up and I'll go to part four and we'll describe that 95 again. And you can see here, now we have a derivative. So this is just the exact same color. And how I made this was I just took this reflectance 90 color, dragged the chip over like so, dropped it, clicked on it, and then simply pulled that value slider all the way up to 255. Because remember, we can go to 255 on our reflectance 90. So now we end up with a mid-value reflectance 0 and a high-value reflectance 90, but they're both the same color as far as hue and saturation are concerned. They're exactly the same color. There is no difference. The only difference is the intensity of the color. And this will allow for a much smoother and predictable color variation between reflectance 0 and reflectance 90. So let's go ahead and take a look at that in action. So here we see at reflectance 95, this is no different than it was uh, with the white. However, at 90, we can see a little bit of difference than we saw with the white. But if we go down lower, we really see the difference. So I see how these maintain that color throughout and we don't end up with any weird funkiness from the white creeping in. It's just nice and smooth. It's, it's a very, very smooth gradation from that mid value reflectance zero and that high valued reflectance 90 even though they're very different values it's the color and the saturation being the same that makes this a very smooth gradation and it just creates a very natural look and particularly down here when we get to the lower roughnesses now this is a truly metallic object it is the cyan color that we wanted it to be but it's also 
purely reflective and metallic through and through. Looks very natural. This is exactly what we want. Now, that's great. And this monochromatic sort of approach here works great. But what if you want a material that's going to switch between two colors, where it's going to start one color at reflectance zero, but then it's going to change to another color at reflectance 90? Well, we can do that. It's very easy to do in Maxwell. However, there's something to know about that, and that is intensity. So here we have our material here. It's got the same cyan reflectance zero, you know, 180, 128, 128. And I've created a complementary color here to go with it at the reflectance 90, and that would be zero. So it's exactly the opposite point on the color wheel. So therefore, it's a complementary color. And I've increased the saturation and the value to 225, which is the maximum that we can go with reflectance zero. It's not the maximum that we can go with reflectance 90. Reflectance 90, we can go all the way up. But there's a point, there's a reason why I kept it at 225, and I'll show it to you in a little bit. But the idea here is that this red is going to be dominant because it's much more intense than this cyan teal kind of color. And again, it won't be such a big issue at roughness 95, but if we go down in roughness and we'll look at that render, that's R and R part five. You'll see here at 95, not such a big deal, but if we go down, you'll see that red really begin to dominate. And I mean, really begin to dominate. It becomes strongly powerful to the point where the cyan sort of teal color gets very, very pushed back in a, in a way that may not be what you want. I mean, if this is what you want, then great. But if this isn't what you want, then you want to know how to fix it. Well, let's go ahead and go all the way down here. I just wanted to point out to you that as we go lower in roughness, that red color really takes over and it becomes, again, very much like that white color was on the first set of color renders here. It dominates and it kind of marginalizes the original cyan color, which is not necessarily the effect that I was looking for. So how do I fix that? Well, I'll show you how we fix that. Go back over here, go to the next one, which would be part five. And this is the balancing lesson. So the idea here is that all I've done is I've taken that 180 cyan and I've just boosted it up to 225 and 225 to match the 225 and the 225 here. Now, again, like I said, we have that accuracy issue. So those numbers aren't exactly 225 anymore, but it's not a big deal. The idea, again, is that these are complementary colors, so they're exact opposites. So they, they should be garish. I mean, the whole idea of why I chose them to be exact opposite is because they, they should clash. They shouldn't work together. But by simply matching the saturation and the value, these colors are now balanced with one another. They're at, at a predictable level of control. I, I know that the cyan is not going to be overpowered by this red, and I'll show that to you in the form of a render. So we'll go over to R and R part six, and here we go. So now, of course, at the high roughness, we see that cyan is a lot lighter because we increase the saturation and the value, but it still looks good, and we don't see any of that red creep in at all at these high roughnesses. However, we get down lower, we begin to see some of that red coming in, but it's not very strong. It's very, very subtle. It's almost exactly what you would want for like a fabric or something like that. It's a very nice look. And it creates this a very subtle color shift that, that isn't obnoxious. And if we go down to the really low roughnesses, you can see here that, yeah, we do see that red at the reflectance 90, where it's just at the very, very edge of the object, we can see it. But all the rest of that fall off is actually nice and natural, and it creates a much more controllable look to our object. So again, the idea here is in order to control the fall off between these two objects, the value and the saturation play a key part in how these two relate to one another. And if you're finding one color is dominating and you don't want it to, just go ahead and increase or decrease the saturation and values until you find the balance between these two. It's all numerical. I mean, everything's numerical. And this is the reason why I prefer to work in HSV is because this sort of numerical system makes sense. Remember, 360 for here, 256 and 256. And you know, you can start playing with the scale between your reflectance 90 saturation and hue and your 90 saturation hue and value. And remember that roughness is basically, you know, the high roughness objects go to reflectance zero, low roughness objects go to reflectance 90.